Fidel Castro may be the man who has come closest of all to heating up the Cold War. And while it has been decades since the end of the Soviet Union and half a century since the Cuban Missile Crisis, tensions between the United States and Cuba are only now beginning to ease. Castro was born on the 13th of August, 1926, in Biran, Cuba. His childhood was notably abusive, but when he graduated high school, he attended the University of Havana. There, he developed the extreme left-wing views that would go on to guide his political career. His first two attempts at overthrowing governments to form a communist nation failed. He had unsuccessfully tried to take down the governments of the Dominican Republic and then his native Cuba getting him and his brother Raul Castro sent to prison for 15 years. Upon being released, they traveled to Mexico, where they meet Che Guevara, an Argentine physician turned communist revolutionary. The trio spends the next two years traveling between the U.S. and Mexico, trying to gain support for their ideologies. Eventually, a group of exiles lands in Cuba, where most are slaughtered, but 13 escape to the Sierra Maestra Mountains. Among them are the Castros and Guevara. Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista made the grave mistake of paying little attention to this small group of survivors. He easily could have crushed them, but due to a lack of U.S. support and his own ignorance, uh, Batista was not able to stop Castro's forces, so Fidel Castro, uh, Raul Castro, Che Guevara, and their communist forces were able to overthrow Batista. Castro then placed himself in power, beginning his lengthy control over Cuba. He initially had given the pres presidency and prime minister to others in the group, but named himself the prime minister soon after. Within the next few years, Cuba formed diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union due to the island nation's proximity to the United States. At this point, President Kennedy felt threatened and placed an embargo on trade with Cuba. This increased tensions between the two nations and led to the Bay of Pigs invasion in which 1,300 exiles land in Cuba. Armed with U.S. weapons, the exiles attempted to assassinate Castro, but failed. The exiles were eventually released when the United States gave Cuba millions of dollars in food and medicine. This passive aggressiveness culminated in the Cuban Missile Crisis, where the Soviets placed nuclear missiles in Cuba for increased first strike capability. Because Cuba was so close to the United States, the Russians would be able to launch missiles from Cuba that would hit the United States in just minutes. This was extremely threatening to basically everyone in the world. During the two-week period of the Cuban Missile Crisis, there were numerous close calls, which could have meant total war. In fact, there were instances in which someone could only have pressed a button and it would have effectively been the beginning of the end of the world. This may be the most momentous and important event of Castro's career, as it affects global politics to this day. The missile crisis struck such fear into the hearts of first world nations as a U.S. war with the USSR would most likely have wiped out all humans on the planet. Several years after the crisis, Castro named himself dictator, giving him absolute power over Cuba which he abused greatly. He stole and even killed his own people in his totalitarianistic regime, and because of this, many Cubans began immigrating to the United States. Over the course of 1980, the Mario Boatlift took place, in which 125,000 Cubans made the U.S.-bound voyage. A decade later, however, Clinton had to end this open-door policy which had allowed Cubans into the U.S. freely. Now only those that made it to land could stay, while others who were found at sea were to be repatriated. This was because of the massive amount of Cubans coming into the United States to escape Castro's reign. In 2000, clear tensions can be seen between Cuba and Russia, when Castro and Putin meet to discuss Cuba's $20 million debt to Moscow. The collapse of the USSR had stripped Cuba of much of its influence, as people no longer had to worry about nuclear war, with there being little diplomacy between Cuba and Russia. And finally, in 2008, Fidel Castro officially resigned from his position as dictator of Cuba, leaving the power to his brother Raul. He says that Raul actually had power for some time when he did this because he was getting very old, sick, and weak. However, Fidel remains unofficially influential and has began repairing U.S.-Cuban relations despite his outspoken distrust for U.S. policy. Castro's impact through his career is undeniably massive. Very few can claim to have come as close as him to ending life as we know it. And though the actions he takes today scarcely have much effect, and his death is soon to come, 
Numerous first world countries are still skittish when it comes to Cuba due to the missile crisis.